Yeah, he is everywhere. Scott Drew, Baylor's national championship head coach, was in Phoenix. I thought I saw him there with a picture with Ish Wainwright. He was on the Today Show earlier today with the book, of course, The Road to Joy. And both, we have two copies on the set here at Sikkim 365 Radio. Scott Drew joins us. Book signings on May the 10th and the 14th at the Baylor Bookstore. And then the silos, the Magnolia. And Scott, now you're an author, huh? <laughs> Well, I'm an author with a lot of help from Don Yeager, okay? So <laughs> if I was an author, it'd be just a picture book, all right? So <laughs> we, we, got, we got words in there. <laughs> what was, uh, was this obviously, one, something that, that makes a lot of sense, whether you'd won the national championship or not, but did, did that allow this to even be more timing, better timing because of last year's success? Uh, um, God's timing is always perfect, and I know uh, when we went to the first NCAA tournament uh, in 2008, uh, five years after we took the job, some people thought, hey, can you write a book? And then after you go to the Elite Eight in 2010, can you write a book? In 2013, when you win the NIT, um, uh, when we got to the first number one ranking, uh, but to me, once once we won it all, it was uh, – time to uh, do two things and uh, first and foremost um, give all the uh, honor and glory to God who gave us this platform and has blessed our program and then the second thing is a chance to, to grow the Baylor family and uh, let people just understand uh, what uh, uh, our community is about what our players are about uh, the administration and everyone that's contributed to this culture and winning program. Scott, this is not a book that is, a, you know, a biography or a straight up basketball book. Obviously, it has some of those elements in it, but this is more of, of kind of uh, your philosophy on things, right? And is that is that the kind of book you would have always wanted to write? Is one that you could kind of share how you do what you do at Baylor? Well, I, I, to, to me, it's it's winning the game of life, and uh, um, just uh, when you're. When you're doing things uh, 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 in God's will, uh, how how He can bless things. And uh, um, for us, uh, there's a lot of times in coaching, people want to know what play, what defense, what. Um, but in life, we all deal with struggles. We all deal with success. We all deal with adversity. Um, and just uh, uh, how you build a team, how you interact with people. Um, and, and, you know, we have the culture, joy, Jesus, others, yourself. I mean, the greatest commandment, love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, love your neighbors, yourself. And uh, if you're serving others and you're helping other people reach their goals and dreams uh, and you're a part of something bigger than yourself, uh, it's easy to uh, want to be a part of that culture and be a part of that team. You know, when, when you were in the national tournament, when you won the Big 12, you sent everybody, like anyone who had ever played there under you, uh, uh, certain things, even some that had covered you or supported you or whatever. It, how much do you keep little notes or a, a, a diary or something for you to remember as much as you do? <laughs> I'm laughing because, you know, when, you're, when your parents tell you something, uh, uh, especially when you're younger, you, you remember it, and then after a while you're like, ah, eh, it's really not important. So the first three years we were at Baylor, my dad said, keep notes so you got this for a book one day, you know? Uh, <laughs> and and I, I did that for the first three years. After that, I, I, I got time for the notes. So anyway, uh, I need to be much better at that. Um, but uh, it, to me, why I coach and what gives me the most joy is seeing other people um, acknowledge, recognize, uh, feeling good about themselves. I mean, to me, like the parade and the past players going first and all the fans seeing their excitement and joy. I mean, that's, that's really what, what motivates me. So to be able to give back with them and let them share in big moments, especially um, when, I mean, that, that's what a, a, a team's about as well. As you know, normally after a game, people interview the leading score, but it took a lot more people for that leading score to be able to be interviewed and just making sure everyone's recognized and appreciated. And um, that's something that uh, uh, I love to do personally. What was your favorite part of the process of, of putting the book together? You know, coaches very, very seldom get a chance to reflect. I mean, every day there's a new, new uh, uh, crisis or new, new thing to tend to. People want to know what coaches do. You know, season's over. What are you doing now? It's like raising kids, right? I mean, their basketball season might be over. Their baseball season might be over. But when you have kids, 
And we got, we got, remember now we got 13 of them, then a couple walk-ons and GAs and man, when you got 25 in the family, let alone all your staff, there's always things to keep you busy and you don't really get a chance to reflect. And when, when, uh, to me, my memory's not the best, but obviously Don talked to our, our past coaches and everybody else and he'd bring up, do you remember this? And I'm like, how do I remember that? But it gave you a chance to reflect and acknowledge just uh, what, what, uh, uh, and all the people that were a part of uh, the process and journey and uh, uh, things that they were able to contribute to. And at the same time, uh, just a behind the scenes look at some of the things um, and how we operate our program. And hopefully uh, it helps inspire, motivate, uh, uh, um, uh, lead somebody to, hey, that's a great idea because. Uh, the smart take from the strong, so you always want to uh, improve what you do. Coach, there's a lot of players, a lot of great stories. I, I would certainly say Ish Wainwright is one of those. We saw you out there visiting him the other night as the Suns took on the Mavericks and got themselves a win. Uh, what's it been like to see his journey and uh, to see where he is right now? Well, I, I mean, Ish is one of the all-time uh, best leaders uh, I've had the privilege and honor to coach. And, um and, and he's somebody that uh, is such a great teammate. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because I tell her uh, when we're when we're playing in the season, if you can't play, you're injured. You should have a hoarse voice after the game because you're giving everything you can to help your teammates. And very seldom does anyone ever have a hoarse voice but the coach, you know, because <laughs> we're usually yelling at the officials, right? So, so after the game, I'm talking to this, and obviously he didn't play that game, and he could barely talk because he was hoarse from how much he energy and, and how much effort he gives to supporting his teammates. And um, I mean, it, it, there's a reason why the team sees on, he's on usually are successful and uh, he's just a great energy giver, a great leader. Uh, so uh, selfless uh, and, and teams benefit that he's on the book, the road to joy on Monday, a uh, Tuesday of next week, noon until two at the Baylor university bookstore at the silos on Saturday, September, or May 14th, excuse me, uh, will be from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., the book, The Road to Joy. Uh, you will be traveling, I believe, this weekend. I have been fortunate enough to develop a little bit of a relationship with Dick Vitale, not like you and many others, but uh, he always talked about wanting you to come see him at the gala, a fundraiser, as you know, for cancer, and we know what Dickie V has been through. I believe that this weekend is going to be a big weekend for you as far as being honored as well. What does that mean to you? Well, I, I, I've been to his gala uh, several times, and uh, you laugh, you cry, you think, uh, just like uh, Coach Valvano uh, said in his famous speech. Um, but most of all, you raise money for a great cause. And I know uh, uh, Dick wants the, the goal $7 million this year, uh, and it's amazing uh, uh, just uh, what he's been able to do and help with the fight versus cancer. I know uh, I was with uh, Bob Valvano, and he said he was diagnosed with stage four cancer, but uh, he's fine because of uh, uh, all the advances, medical advances in, in large part from uh, uh, the Jimmy B Foundation and uh, everyone contributing to uh, the fight against cancer. So, uh, again, um, uh, he's, done a, he's done a lot, uh, but he – Dick Vitale has got a heart of gold. I mean, he's an unbelievable ambassador for college uh, basketball, uh, and and he's someone uh, uh, that's made a difference in not only uh, uh, college basketball, though, uh, this world, and especially uh, just how much he cares for people. So I always love when he's on your show because I know that means we got a big game coming that's up. Exactly that exactly right. Means he's on it. And, and you know what? Usually uh, the last couple of years when he's on games, we do well. Yep. So that's a good thing, too. <laughs> There's well, no question about that. Well, the, the last game he did on television before he, he yep. had to go into treatment was, was you guys. So, you know, like right now, he, he's he on was, a – He was a game-time decision, too, before mm -hmm. that game. I remember they didn't know if he was going to be able to be here. And then, and then afterwards he came in and danced in the locker room, congratulated our guys. So, yeah, that was awesome. What will you do as far as the, the roster you have? Are you set now going forward? Is, is everything pretty much locked in, or do you have to – what what about the timeline with, with Matthew Meyer in the transfer portal? Well, well, for, first of all, uh, nothing is ever set in college basketball. So that's, <laughs> that's number one. Yep. Um, number, number, number two, with uh, right now, um, players have till June 1st 
um, to decide if they're staying in the draft or coming back to college. So um, we'll see uh, uh, what decisions Matt, what decisions uh, Adam make in the near future here. Um, but obviously, uh, uh, we've been really blessed to have players that have opportunities to reach their goals and dreams. And um, people say, well, do you want them back? We want them back. And of course we do. But at the same time, our job is also to help them reach their goals and dreams. And if they are able to do that, well, then, then, then we've done our job at the same time. If they don't, uh, you always love uh, uh, to have them back until uh, they, they're ready to go. Coach, I don't think we've talked to you since you made some staff changes. Obviously, you had to. Uh, Coach Brooks getting the great opportunity there at K-State and so on. But Tank. Uh, Tank, yeah. excuse me. Uh, Jared Nunes. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Don't take Brooks. <laughs> yeah, I know. They got Tank, but that's it. Yeah, I know. My fault on that. But, you know, Jared Nunes. Elbow him, Smokey. Alvin Brooks, now associate head coach, co-associate head coach, along with John Jacobs, And then bringing Tweety Carter into the program. Uh just your thoughts on on the staff movements, bringing Tweedy back, and you know, just to kind of reshaping this thing. Yeah, well, first and foremost, can't thank Coach Tang enough for what he's done for not only Baylor uh, basketball but our university and community. Him and his family uh, 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 will be forever grateful. Um, they, we'll cheer for him every game except for hopefully two uh, when we face him. Three if we play him in the uh, uh, conference tournament. Four if it's in the NCAA tournament. But other than that, we'll be cheering for him. Uh, and then, and then with uh, uh, Coach Jacobs and Coach Brooks, they've earned uh, that that position. And we, the way we do things on staff, uh, it, it, it's it's our team. It's not my way or the highway. And so those guys uh, uh, contribute uh, uh, so much to of our success and what we've already done. Um, so uh, excited for them, and then uh, really excited for Coach uh, uh, Nunes because. It's a new role, new opportunity for him, and he's uh, been outstanding uh, and a big part of our success over the years. And then bringing Tweedy Carter back, I mean, scored 74 points in, in, a, in a high school game, all-time winning, unofficial high school score. Because remember, he played uh, varsity ball when he was three years old, I think. <laughs> but uh, uh, actually, in seventh grade, I think he, he was this, he was in uh, uh, playing varsity ball in Louisiana. And then first McDonald's All-American School's history, but even more than that, uh, the last few years, he played overseas and uh, pro- pro- professional career for 12 years. And I thought we were going to lose him to the Oklahoma Thunder because once he got done, he went and uh, did a tryout with them. And they said, you know, um, we can't keep him, but we'd like to hire him as a coach. And at that point, I was like, "Now nah, you need to keep playing if you want to play. And he wanted to play. So uh, 12 years later, he's been back in the community. He loves Waco, spends the summertime in here, has his family here. So uh, really excited to have him back. He'll bring a lot of energy, enthusiasm, excitement. And um, he's, he's just like uh, uh, so many of us out there. And that is you cut him and he bleeds green. So uh, he loves Baylor. Well, Coach, I was gonna I was gonna ask you about Tweedy specifically, but you kind of covered. But I I don't know if I've never met anybody who's maybe made to be a coach given his path more than Tweedy Carter is. Yeah, and 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 again, he he was an unbelievable leader in 2010 to help lead that team, uh, him and Fe to uh, the Elite Eight, and uh, uh, we lost to Duke, who won it all and could have won a national championship that year possibly, and. Uh, but but Tweedy is somebody that uh, 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 unbelievable uh, uh, human being, great encourager, loves loves young people, and uh, so I know uh, we're excited about having him a part of the program. And it's great getting some of our past players now that are finishing up playing, seeing what they're doing in life, and uh, uh, helping them with the second careers. Yeah, they come back, they work out at your place. It's all it's, it's the family, as you mentioned, Scott. One more thing: how many? different segments are you doing today whether television zoom radio phone whatever promoting your book I, matt's just telling me what i have next so i think there's <laughs> i think there's six or eight of them but uh uh none more than important than this one all oh. right we can't thank you guys enough for what you've done for us and how you uh uh help our program and make uh uh, Baylor and Central Texas, such a fun place to be in. So thank you guys very much. Thank Plus, you. I'm looking down at I'm looking down in the gym and Maceo Teague's in there working there out. And I was, yeah, I, I, you, you talk about a family and uh, 
By the way, wait, wait till you see him smoking. His beard is as long as I saw yours back in the day. It, so he, he, I don't think he's done it since he left. I want to see him with the beard. Like, okay. not, not James Harden looking beard. Not one of no. those where you can hide animals and sit, stuff in sit it. Sit him down the street when he's done. Not, I got to see that, this. Not that long. No. Yeah, yeah, not that long, but, yeah. but it is long. Yeah. Scott, thank you again. Congratulations on the book. Good luck. I know the book signings will be pounding that uh, over the next few days. Thanks for your time. Congratulations. Look forward to talking more basketball with you as well. Appreciate you guys. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Baylor men's basketball coach Scott Drew. The book again, The Road to Joy. I went by today, went to Barnes & Noble, walked in the door. Uh, there was a setup there. I can't remember exactly. It was not far. It took me like about 30 seconds. Grabbed a couple of books, went to the front. I think they're somewhere around $28 to $30 a piece. Book signings again, Tuesday next week, noon until 2 at the Baylor University Bookstore. And then following a week from Saturday, the 14th from 11 to 1 at the, uh, the historic barn at the silos. Scott Drew and the book, The Road to Joy. All right, we have more to get to uh, as well.